Could 3D artists be worried? You've seen the hype, the ads promising perfect, production-ready 3D models from a single sentence. They claim anyone can now generate characters, props, and entire worlds with just a few keystrokes. Which sounds a lot like a threat to our profession. But is the reality a gimmick or a genuine replacement for an artist's skills? As a 3D artist myself, I have to admit, I've had those same worries. So I decided to put the most popular and powerful free 3D AI tools to the test and find out what's really going on. The promise is incredibly seductive. The goal is to slash production timelines, make 3D creation accessible to everyone, and let studios build bigger worlds faster. And that's where the fear creeps in. If a machine can do the work of a human in a fraction of the time, what does that mean for our job security? Our years of mastering complex software, developing an artistic eye, and learning the hard-won technical skills about to be made obsolete by an algorithm? The internet is full of hot takes, but I wanted to get my hands dirty. I wanted to see what these tools can actually do right now in a real world workflow. The only way to find out was to test them with the proper artist level prompt and review the results. I came up with a single prompt to use across all the leading free platforms so we can compare them apples to apples. The prompt is a weathered leather bound spell book with a glowing crystal embedded in the cover resting on an ancient stone pedestal. This prompt gives the AI a few distinct materials, shapes, and a light source to handle. And now, let's see how they did. First, I use Meshi AI. Meshi is one of the big names, known for being fast and user-friendly. You type in your prompt, pick a style, and it spits out four concepts in seconds. I have to say, from a distance, the initial results were surprisingly good. One of the four really nailed the vibe. I picked it and sent it for refinement which took another minute or two. The final model looked impressive in the web viewer. The leather had a decent texture, the crystal was there and it was sitting on a stone base. Visually, it was a fantastic starting point for concept art. But the real test is what's under the hood and we'll get to that. The process was smooth, fast and you get a decent number of credits to start with as a free user. Then I moved on to Luma Labs Genie. Genie has a reputation for being a bit more creative or fantastical with its output. The interface is dead simple, just a text box. You type, you wait, and you wait a little longer than Meshi. The result was different. It was definitely a book on a pedestal, but it had this soft, almost dreamlike quality. The edges were rounded, the textures felt more illustrative than realistic, and then the whole thing had a quirky artistic charm. It didn't follow my prompt to the letter, but it created something unique. For generating unexpected ideas or stylized assets, Genie is fascinating and it's completely free, which is a huge plus. Then I moved on to Hunyon 3D. This is Tencent's very powerful text to 3D platform. It boasts high quality photorealistic results and fast generation times. After navigating the sign up, I put in the prompt. The generation was quick and the result was technically impressive. It generated a model with very high geometric detail and even produced PBR texture maps. The book's shape was well defined, the crystal had a convincing glow, and the stone pedestal felt solid. Of the three, Hunyan produced what looked on the surface like the most production ready asset. This is the most important part. A pretty picture in a web viewer means nothing if the asset is a nightmare to work with in a real game engine or animation software. So I exported the models from Meshi, Luma, and Honeon and brought them into my own 3D software, which is Blender, to see what was really going on. This is where the AI illusion starts to fall apart. Let's start with the geometry, the wireframe. That Meshi AI model, the one that looked so good on the surface, its topology was chaotic. The mesh was a mess of stretched, disorganized polygons. For static prop that you'll never see up close, maybe you could get away with it. But if you need to animate this model or even just optimize it for a game, you would have to completely rebuild it by hand. That's a process called retopology and it can take hours. The Luma Labs Genie model was similar. The mesh was dense and lumpy with no clean edge loops or logical polygon flow. It's what we call bad geometry and it's a nightmare to clean up. The Hunyan model, despite its 
high detail was also a problem. While impressive, the mesh was incredibly dense with hundreds of thousands of triangles, making it difficult to work with for real-time applications like games without significant optimization. Despite claims of improved topology, it was still an automatically generated mesh that would require skilled artists to clean up for any professional pipeline. Oh, now let's talk about UV mapping. UVs are the 2D maps that tell the software how to wrap a texture around a 3D model. Clean UVs are absolutely critical for professional texturing. Unsurprisingly, the UVs on all the AI models were a disaster. They were automatically generated, creating hundreds of tiny disjointed pieces. Trying to paint these models in a program like Substance Painter would be impossible without, you guessed it, manually re redoing all the UVs. Finally, the textures. While they look okay from a distance, up close, they were blurry and low resolution. They lacked the sharp, high fidelity detail required for modern games or VFX. They were PBR textures with all the right maps, but quality just wasn't there. So what does this all mean? It means that not a single one of these free AI generators produced a model that was ready to be dropped into a professional project. Every single one would require hours of manual labor to fix the topology redo the UVs and create new textures from scratch. After spending hours testing these tools and pulling apart the results, I can answer the question right now, today. Is a free AI text to 3D generator going to take the job of a professional 3D artist? The answer is a big fat no. So I just talked about the free models of these 3D AIs. The paid versions might do even more. Look at it this way. Why pay for a 3D AI to get an unfinished product? without UV, proper UV unwrapping, without proper mesh flow, and without even high quality textures, when you can pay a 3D artist to get everything straight away. What these tools are in the current state is a new kind of creative partner. They are phenomenal for rapid prototyping and brainstorming. The ability to generate a dozen visual concepts in minutes is a superpower for a concept artist. It can help a client visualize an idea before committing to hours of manual modeling. It can even serve as a rough base for a digital sculptor to refine into a final piece. AI can help automate boring, repetitive tasks, letting artists focus on the creative side of the work. But AI lacks two things that define a professional artist, technical execution and artistic intent. It cannot create clean, usable topology it cannot create logical, efficient UV maps. And most importantly, it cannot make deliberate, creative choices that tell a story. An artist understands why a scratch on a leather book should be in a certain place or why a pedestal's edge is chipped. AI for now is just assembling data based on patterns. It doesn't understand context or emotion. The future is likely a hybrid workflow where artists use AI as one of their tools. An artist might use AI to generate a rough idea, then use their skills to retopologize it, professionally texture it, and integrate it into a project. The role of a 3D artist isn't disappearing, it's evolving. Those who learn to incorporate these tools will become faster and more efficient, spending less time on the grunt work and more time on what truly matters, creativity, quality, and artistry. AI 3D generators are here to stay, and they are improving at a shocking speed. For now, Think of them as a powerful assistants, not replacements. They are a tool, not a threat. The unique vision, technical polish, and creative problem solving of a human artist are still irreplaceable. So don't sell your graphics tablet just yet. Instead, learn what these tools can do, experiment with them, understand their strengths, and be very aware of their weaknesses. The future doesn't belong to AI. It belongs to the artists who are smart enough to use it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you tried any of these tools? And which one impressed you the most? If you want to stay ahead of the curve on how AI is changing the world of 3D, make sure to subscribe for more deep dives like this. Thank you for watching.